All right, we are back for episode three, uh, back in your eyes, back in your ears, streaming across YouTube and the higher things, new and updated, higher things, new and updated, it's fancy. Ooh, I like it. it. Looks pretty I good. Like new and updated, higher things, website. Pastor Hall, it's good to see you. How are you doing? Oh, Patty boy, I'm always, whenever I'm with you, I'm just better. So, so we, had, we had a little bit of a disagreement last week. We did, a little bit, a smidge. A smidge. Smidge. There is a there is not a, divisive. Yes. We went and got a mani pedi afterwards. We felt we're fine. We're perfectly fine. Good yes. now. We're good now. We're all trimmed up. Got the curls under. Yep. Kind of. Yep. We're good. Good that. All right. right. This week Thanks. we're going to talk about something a little bit happier. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I say talk so. about some Christmas movies. Christmas movies. Now we're not talking about Hallmark ones, right? Or are we? Are, are those considered in this? I think they're probably considered, but I don't know if I've ever seen a good one. There's a, a game right now. You can, you put a Hallmark movie on and you stop it at minute three, and then you have to write how is the movie going to progress and end. So we tried it the other day, and Alice and I, if you combine our answers, we were correct. It was a woman who got fired. She worked for a caterer and then did a trip to Ireland. And I said she was going to fall in love with a guy who was getting married, do the catering job, and then they would get together. But that didn't happen. But they ended up falling in love when she catered the event. So we were both kind of right. Was there kind of like an epilogue where they opened a catering company or something? Yeah. You know, so it's like, see, it's just, go. it's fantastic. You see them once, yeah. you see them all. Oh, yeah. Well, then that's the fun part about it. I said one time they need to get like a Love Actually Hallmark movie going. You know, and that that some kids. Well, I consider Love Actually a Christmas movie because it, it is. It takes place. Some people yeah. hate it. I know uh, some people despise it as a Christmas movie because they say, "Oh, it's not proper." Um, but no, they're just ridiculous. That was a great accent. Though. Yes, it was. It was, it was my. Good. It's it's. It was very good. It's fun, but <laughs> the uh, the Hallmark. I said they get to get all oh, like Candace Cameron Bure and the Allison gal and the, the one that from uh, Mean Girls mm -hmm. is always in them. If you get all of them in one movie, and then they had a commercial about it. There was like three of them in it called The Wedding Veil. And I was like, ah, they listened to me. Tick, not take that, that's another story. But Hallmark has bugs in my house that are listening to my ideas. But <laughs> To every middle-aged to later-aged woman. Different, yeah. They, they all, they're all inspired by my thoughts. So, so, what would you say is your favorite Christmas movie? I'd say it's a competition between Christmas, well, probably Christmas Vacation, I'd say. National okay. Lampoon's Christmas yep. Vacation. That's my favorite one. Yeah. I actually, I think I would agree with you. Yeah. I See? Think, yeah. So we're starting off well. I, I think Christmas Vacation is the pinnacle. That's where you reach. Appropriate family <clears throat> Christmas, right. mostly appropriate family Christmas movies. Yeah. There's no nudity in it. There's no, like, no, there's some profanity in it. But it's not, it's, it's still, you know, it's just, it's all, you got all the cultural stuff that comes out of it. It's just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I guess that's when we can start digressing. What, what comes after that one? So that's like the one. No matter what, every Christmas season, which starts in July and ends in February, mm -hmm. you watch it, right? So what, what comes after that, I guess, is the question. Well, I can't actually name my favorite Christmas movie because it's wholly inappropriate. Right. So, and, and unlike I'm most not people get view, myself in we trouble. at Higher Things can curb ourselves. A little exactly. bit. We do, yep. sometimes. So good on you. Yeah, good I tried. on you, Pat. You know, good every on once you. Well. You did it. So, without that one, so you have National Lampoon, what would be the second one? My second fit. Maybe we have to say it at the same time. On the count of three, we'll both say it. All right. One, two, three. Die Elf. Hard. Die Hard. Oh, man. You went that well, I mean, does, I like does it. Does it, it count like it. as a Christmas movie? Does I Die think Hard, Die Hard is a Christmas our movie. Our audience might not have ever even They may seen not have seen Die Hard, Die Hard. but your dad has seen Die Hard. Your dad probably, probably watches your it every time. Too. He's probably seen Die Hard. Oh, wow. Now I am starting to feel old. That's true. Brian While your mom too. watches It's a Wonderful Life, your dad watches Die Hard. And I watch both, so I'm just always confused. Yep. But Die Hard, Die Hard 2, they both take place at Christmas time, so yep. I consider it. And and the family ends up together at the end. Bad guy dies. Yep. Christmas to me, you know? All right, so Elf. Elf is my Elf. wife's favorite Christmas Oh, movie. I can see Miss Amanda getting into Elf. She yeah. loves Elf. Elf is Absolutely. Good. You know, I always tell people they should have the same joy when they receive the sacraments they do when Buddy the Elf hears that Santa's coming. It's like, you know, Santa! 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 I know him! I know him! Ah, oh, but yes, yes, I get Jesus, but alas, it doesn't happen. So, one day, maybe. One day, Someday. maybe. It'll happen. 
So we got that. So you have you have Christmas Vacation. You got Elf. Yep. You have Die Hard. Um, some consider Princess Bride even to be a Christmas movie because at the beginning there's Christmas lights in the window outside. I've probably seen this movie way too okay, many times. Okay, yeah. And there's a Santa decoration up. But the thing is, is there really any Christmas themes to it? No. no. Does it make you feel good? Yeah. yeah. Um, or you're just one of those weird people who have never seen The Princess Bride and then no one really likes you anyway, so it's okay. I mean, you can dislike The Princess Bride, but you have to have at least seen it. Okay, that's where we disagree a little too. I oh, don't, you can't, I don't you can't think like you can't dislike it. I don't know how you can. That's a different podcast, everybody. Can you dislike the Princess Bride? Episode six. Can you, can you dislike, dislike the, the Princess, Princess Bride? Bride? You know, it's kind of right. like Irresistible Grace. Um, you must love Princess we'll, Bride. We'll give ourselves two episodes before we we'll get, get there. We'll get there. I like that. Um, but then you have like the classics. You have it's a wonderful, and that's even the difference too. How Christmas movies have morphed over mm -hmm. the years. It was always kind of like you have like Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street. And then you have the remake, you know, in the yep. 90s. You have the original one. You have, like, uh, It's a Wonderful Life. So the feel-good life story kind of turn-around-your-life Christmas yeah. movies. Yeah. Of the 50, 40s, 50s kind of one. And then, I mean, I... Christmas I, story really started changing yeah. some of it. Yeah. You know, and that's... So the, the family 70s. story. Yeah. And I think the, the 90s and the 2000s, they almost became more of love stories. Like, yeah. Love actually. Well, yeah. And, um... The Christmas movie or trope is then yeah. intertwined with the the dating and the yeah. true love trope. Well, and love actually really changed it. That came out in what, like 2000, probably 2004? Yeah, 2003, 2004. Yeah, you know. Somewhere around there. I was in high school. So, I mean, it comes out almost tw two decades ago. Yeah. And, yeah, it was all, it was every single narrative of it was a love story narrative. And that became, so you have... Christmas is that time of joy in the midst of sadness, mm -hmm. joy in the midst of sorrow, despair. That's like It's a Wonderful Life, yep. Miracle 34th Street. Then you get the more family-oriented Christmas story, Christmas vacation. Um, and then you get into, now it's more love narrative. Yep. Except Elf. <laughs> Except Elf. Elf's where it just yeah. changes the whole thing. Or if it's like a whole, like, a, it is a kid's movie. Yeah. Christmas just like movie. a kid's movie. Yeah. Then you got the claymation movies. You got the old Rudolph yeah, the Red Nosed Reindeer. Yeah. Frosty the Snowman. Yeah, right. You got the scared. Those claymation yep. scared me, man. Like every other They're kid. Little, yeah, yeah, well, like the Heat Miser. The Heat yeah. Miser is scary. It's scary stuff. Yeah. I didn't like watching them as a kid. My mom would put them on. I, maybe she did it on purpose to torment me. I don't Possibly know. Possibly she could have. But, but you it's got interesting. Charlie Brown. Oh, yeah, you got the Charlie Brown Christmas. Yeah. You got that. I've heard some people say Harry Potter's Christmas movie. I don't know how I feel about that one. Because they go home during Yeah, they Christmas. have Christmas scenes and everything. They have all that. So I don't know about that one. I don't go as far as to say Harry Potter's its own thing. I would I something you can watch at Halloween, you can watch it at Christmas time. Yeah, I you don't know. I mean, but they have it's also a Halloween movie. Yeah, yeah. it's also a Halloween movie. It's not a Thanksgiving movie because you know they're they're British. they're British. So it would make sense. Um don't know why JK Rowling Rowling? 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 Rowling. Rowling. Didn't think of that. Didn't think of us Americans when she wrote that, but that's a different narrative. Different podcast. But it gets down to even why do we watch them. I mean, I watch them all year round. I don't watch them just... I mean, Hallmark starts just, their Christmas movies. I can't do that. Yeah? I just can't. can't do it? Like, I, it's the season. You have to have the I mean, season. It's the same thing with like Christmas music. I can't yeah. listen to Christmas music, period. But like Christmas movies, like it's a Christmas thing. Yeah. I guess some of them... Like Christmas Story, here's my thing. I don't really like Christmas Story that much. I know it very well. Yes. Well, you, yeah. Yeah, I, I know it all. Like, not a finger. You know, I know all that. But, like, the lamp and everything. Oh, I did it. I shot my eye out. I know all of it. Mm -hmm. But if you ask me, what one do you want to watch? That's It would not be your top. It's not going to be there, you know? Um, the other ones will. I think it's just because of the way it makes me... Because when I saw that originally, Christmas Story, I first saw it when I was a little kid. So, like, the Santa Claus scene freaked me out. I didn't get the soap poison. I didn't get half the references. Mm -hmm. Now I get them in the whole Yep, yep. But it just doesn't hit you. But I get you. you got to be in the season, the mood. So you're you're more of a strict, lectionary, liturgical Nazi when it right. comes to Christmas. Movies. Advent comes around. Yeah. And I, I start, you, you start to wind <laughs> up. Easing it in. And then, it. and then you can, you watch your favorites around, yeah. around Christmas. And then you, you rightly put the DVDs in, away. Me, it's it's like it, it like I said before. I'd be Santa Claus if I wasn't a pastor. I'd also own a Christmas store. You know, it'd just be like Christmas. Like there's this Christmas store in Frankenmuth, Michigan. Okay, have you ever heard of this place? No. It's massive, dude. It's like its own state. 
has its own zip code. It's huge. Um, if, if we have anyone watching in Michigan, you know, you probably know what I'm talking about. Frankenmuth is... Send us a brochure. Yeah. Frankenmuth, Michigan is like, they have a, a bunch of old, uh, like, beautiful churches up there. It's a German town you go. There's, like, Germany exploded. There's good parts of Germany. Mm -hmm. Not like the, I'm watching in the Poland Germany, but, like, the, yay, happy, you know, foods and beer Germany. That Germany. And, you know... But you go there, and they have this massive Christmas store. And the parking lot's huge. It's like you're going to a mega church. And um, But you go inside. There's Christmas music. There's ornaments. It's like it's ornament explosion. You can find anything there. We got lost there. We lost... Man, we lose Jamie everywhere. I mean, we have the boys, right? We have eight... Oh, man, who are my kids' names? Lonnie, Manny, Ty, Jamie, Avi, and now the new one, but everyone has to wait for his name. But the, the thing is, we lost Jamie in there. But I lost him under, in like, there's a bunch of Christmas trees, and he was, like, stuck in there. But he wasn't How sad. old was he at the time? Oh, this would have been three years ago. So he was about three, three, four, something like that. So it wasn't Good sad. Good age to get lost, yeah. Yeah, but we found him. We yeah. found him. Yeah. Um, but he was happy in that place. Like, hey. But, yeah, so that's me. I would be stuck in that Frankenmuth store all year. It's fun times. But I wonder, and I, I, get, I don't know. Like I said the other day, it's kind of because it does something different for me. It's more of a... It gets back to that old Christmas movie narrative, like It's a Wonderful Life, is the joy of the Christmas is in the midst of that despair, so I'm not like coming out in our pockets. Right. They say, oh, I'm so depressed. But at the same time, yeah, I deal with a bunch of... Well, I think that... And I that's think, how I function with it. Well, I think that's interesting because the movies don't have the, the joy in the midst of despair. Right. Um, and the older Christmas movies do kind of dwell on, I mean, the Christmas miracle. It's right. like they focus on like Christmas and the actual right. purpose behind it. Right. As a birth of, to celebrate the birth of Christ. Right. Do you think that current Christmas movies, Elf included, um, are not true Christmas movies then? In that sense, they wouldn't be. They're secular Christmas yeah. movies, you know? Kind of like when we talk about Ted Lasso, the, that episode where he said it's Santa's birthday. Mm -hmm. Even if you go back to an office Christmas episode, Steve Carell goes, happy birthday, Jesus. Jesus yep. You know, so even that time change there a little bit, it's not many years. Um, so these are pure secular holiday movies. Mm -hmm. So you should get mad if someone calls it a holiday movie. Right. I mean, in these, there's very little mention of Christ. I mean, Elf, there's none. Mm -hmm. At all. Nope. Love Actually, you have weddings, you have church involved in some stuff at the beginning, a wedding and a funeral. But then outside of that, there's really no... Yep. Mention. No religion. Well, you have the nativity, Right? There was the second lobster at the nativity. Right. So it's like there was more than one lobster at the birth of Jesus. Oh, you know. I've seen that too many times too. Uh, but, you know, that is a difference. <laughs> Whereas with the other ones, you have more of an angelic miracle. I'd say the best thing is maybe it is Christian, but it's metaphysical. That there's something outside of this place that defines this time of the year. The birth of Christ. Okay. Whereas instead, theirs is more... They're almost trying to defend the myth. Like C.S. Lewis once said this, he said, Christianity is the true myth that all other myths are based off of. What he means by it is not that it's pretend. He's saying it's the one thing that's actually true. Right. And then everything else is a false mythology based off it. I think, so for one of our future episodes we've already discussed and, and kind of doing, I think that's a good point when you look at Christology in the movies too. Right. Where you have Superman falling from space and he's yeah. in a cruciform shape. Right, or, right. In the Avengers movies, like there's oftentimes, frequently, the the Christ-like figure, right, that sacrifices himself, right, for the sins of of man. Well, and and all these movies too. That's the point. Is it's not to say okay, you have two options in life. You can either be Amish or be completely worldly, mm -hmm. and those aren't the only two options you have. It's like oh, you're either pro-choice and all this other stuff, or or. You know, and because you take vitamins or something. Well, no, it's like there's a, there's a balance here, and the balance is we we watch these things, and there is some hint of truth in each one. Like, and I know we keep coming back to love, actually, but mm -hmm. what's what's the point of that movie? Is that love is this defining thing instead of hate? Because mm -hmm. it comes out just a couple years after nine eleven. Yep, that's what defines. Yep. That's what gives joy is love, not this just unbridled hatred toward others. And that does define something. So you can take that and say, well, what, what is real love? Is sacrificial love. It gives you that foothold into talking about it with people. So, and if we don't know any of these things, then, then you're just the Bible thumper on the side of the street yelling at people all the time. So in case you're eating locusts and wild honey, 
You shouldn't pretend like you're John the Baptist. With your sandwich sign? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there we go. I love it. All right. Well, I mean, I'm impressed. We agreed. We'll see what we uh, we, we agree. agree. We're gonna week. have some watch parties. Yeah, we'll talk about Princess Bride at another time once I've cooled down from that. Probably watch but, um, some uh, Hallmark movies. Watch some Hallmark movies together. I like it. I Those like are it. pretty good candidates. Cameron Bure, man, God yeah. love her. She married to a hockey player. There we go. It's fun times. Do you know the name of the hockey player? And his last name's Bure, I suppose. So yeah, I have no idea. I don't know either. All right, that's <laughs> that's the third episode of There and Back Again. We will see you here next week thank you for watching thank you for listening uh check us out over at www.higherthings.org our brand new fancy website you can follow us on social media and here on youtube peace